Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Restoration Renegades. I'm your host, Jeremy West, along with our two restoration experts. Y'all are renegades, right? I think so. Okay, great. He's definitely not an expert. He's not an expert, okay. Well, this is Nick and Josh Hobbs from Dalworth Restoration, and of course, the original cowboy restoration renegade himself, Mr. Jason Ward. All right, welcome guys. So we've got a, an important question here. Um, and that is, what types of water damage are covered under a homeowner's policy? It's a pretty broad because, question. And I didn't know there was a different types of water damage. So I guess there's different types of water damage that can occur. What, what are some of those? There is. Uh, you know, you've got anything from roof leaks from rain, right? So you've got rainwater coming in. Generally, those are covered. Um, you've got incidental where maybe a bathtub's overflowed and, and flooded your home. Um, you've got hot water heaters busting and washing machines, you know, hoses going out um, or overflowing as well. And so those things we typically see are covered. Um, where we see coverage issues is rising water from outside. You know, you get a heavy downpour and the water from outside comes inside. That's generally, it's mostly not covered under your insurance. That's uh, FEMA, which would be, you know, from the government. Flood, is that flood? flood insurance, okay. that, that would be flood insurance, right? Um, and then you have, you know, sewer backups. And uh, generally sewer backups, it's kind of a 50-50. We're seeing more of, of those not being covered as much. And uh, anything- like a rough day of burritos. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything beyond the P-trap that has come in from, you know, well, when you say pee trap, does that mean urine trap or pee or something different? Like, no, the pee trap it? on the toilet. That's what okay. helps. It, water stays trap. in there and that kind of helps the sewer gas from not coming yeah. up into your house, right? Oh, okay. um, so anything beyond the pee trap coming in, we see is about a 50-50 chance whether it's going to be covered or not. And uh, those are the, the nasty, yeah. nasty water jobs. And that's based upon the homeowner's policy itself? A lot of it's times, covered yes. Or not? Okay. Yes, that's correct. Sometimes it's considered preventative maintenance and so because of that, you know, it could be tree roots in the yard that have infringed upon the, the, mm. the pipes, um, which is causing the backup. And so those things sometimes are covered and sometimes are not. We don't like to interpret policy because it's not really our job to interpret. It's it's the, the agent's job oh. to interpret policy. We're the adjuster. So well, I had a situation where I added on to my house and the roofing company came out and when they did the valley between the old part of the house and the new part of the house, they did something wrong. They jacked it up. And after they left, construction was done, we got a heavy downpour and we had water coming in the house. So would that be my, my homeowner's policy would cover that, I would assume, or would it fall on the liability of the roofing company? That'd be my question. Yeah, so, uh, you know, this is something that's common in the spring here, especially in Texas, is that you have a lot of roofers that are putting on new roofs and you're kind of, uh, it's dicey because it's like in the middle of the rain season and it's, you've got a lot of rain. And there's a lot of times where roofs, roofers get caught having the uh, roof down and you have these big downpours. And so normally uh, when, when those things happen, and it's common, um, um, of course I would, you know, Google review your roofer before, before uh, choosing them, right? No, but you would uh, want to go and, and um, you still want to file usually under your insurance policy. Your coverage would normally take care of stuff like that. And then the, um, on the back end, the subrogation, the insurance was always going to be looking to go at the, um, you know, looking at the, the source as to why and or what happened and why. And if, they're, if they feel that there's uh, someone that's liable for it, they'll subrogate. Um, um, you know, against those folks to get there to get compensated. But, um, and then you even can see it where the roofer's insurance will, will you could work it through the insurance of the roofer. So it's all really kind of dependent on the situation um, and how willing all parties are to uh, make sure that, you know, it gets taken care of. Fancy word you got there, subrogate. Yeah, I know. I'm known to use some big words. Awesome. Yes. Yes, true story. <laughs> so, <laughs> restoration guys, you got to know a little bit about insurance, a little bit about the legal terminology, yeah, and, and, guess, big, and big words. Yeah, and big and words. And normally so I don't know what they mean, I just throw them out there. That's good. Hopefully you're using the correct word. So far, <laughs> so far as no one's challenged me. <laughs> Till now. Till now. If it sounds good. No, I'll, Say it. I'll defer yeah. to my Say brother it. for the explanation. Yeah, subrogate. Subrogate. All right, guys, you got to learn to subrogate. All right, so we can see how important it is to understand 
your your homeowner's policy and and how you do that is you want to contact your ag agent they're going to tell you the ins and outs of that policy but in the unfortunate circumstance where water damage does occur simply go to restorationrenegades.com and look up a restoration expert such as these guys from Dalworth Restoration Nick and Josh Hobbs and you'll find one near you that can help your situation out but in the meantime if you'd like to learn more about these subject matters and others Simply subscribe to our channel as well as ring that bell so you get all the additional updates and you won't miss one. And we'll see you on the next episode of Restoration Renegades.